If peripheral neuropathy has you dealing with symptoms like numbness or burning feet or electric shocks or tingling, and I hear from a lot of people that are just frustrated because their doctor's like, ah, oh, your tests are great, it's just aging. Or you have neuropathy, we'll just try to manage the pain. Or here's some antidepressants even though you're not depressed. But published research shows that there's at least seven underlying causes that are very common that can quietly be damaging your nerves, and most of them are fixable. So in this video, I'm going to walk you through these seven surprising causes for neuropathy and what the science says about each one. And then at the end, I'm going to point you to our video on seven natural steps you can start to take to reverse these issues. But don't just jump over there now. Inevitably, when I make a video like this, I hear from somebody who's like, whippersnapper, just quit yammering on and tell me what I should take. But inevitably, I say in my head, yeah, that guy's not going to fix it. Because if a person is just looking for remedies, by the end of this video, you're going to understand the varied underlying causes that can create this. So how would there ever be a remedy that's going to fix this for everybody? It's never going to happen. If you can understand what's creating this problem for you, your percentage odds of improving it go up by more than 50%. And peripheral neuropathy can just be categorized as problems with the nerves in the extremities, but it's not usually just bad nerves. Like there's metabolic things going wrong. And you can kind of think about it like these nerves have an insulated coating on them. They call this myelin sheath. And things can go wrong when we start to lose that coating and then all kinds of havoc breaks loose. And you can think about it like just plugging in your toaster. Like that cord has an insulated coating on you that protects you from that electricity traveling through that cord. Like if you took a, a carrot peeler and just started knocking off the insulated coating on that and then you lick the cord while it's plugged in, well that's not going to go well. Like you're going to end up being the toast. I really don't want you to try that at home, but you can understand that that would create trouble. So these causes that we're going to talk about are about things that can go wrong to that myelin sheath, that insulated coating on the nerves, and can break that down. And then as these electrical currents go through these nerves to send signals through the body like they're supposed to, that electricity either slows down or gets stopped or just goes to the wrong place and goes amok because that coating is not there to keep it in the right place. So when that coating breaks down, we're going to end up with a lot of trouble like we're experiencing with these neuropathy symptoms. So cause number one is high blood sugars. And we hear about this a lot when we're hearing about peripheral neuropathy with type 2 diabetics and such. We know that when that blood sugar goes high and kind of bathing all the nerves and all these cells and all this excess sugar that can create a lot of trouble. And when you look at the studies below, you're going to hear them talking about words like hexosamine pathways and PKC pathways. What you really need to understand is that when the sugar goes too high, the body's got to be like, well, how, how else can I process this? I, I can't process it right. What other pathways can I shunt some of this glucose to to try and deal with it that way? And when the body has too much glucose going to these other pathways, it has the ability to create a lot of this trouble with the nerves. It has the ability to kind of break down those coatings like we talked about, and then we experience a lot of those symptoms. We're going to talk a little bit about some of these mechanisms when we go over some of these other causes, but just know that high sugar, bad. And we kind of know that. And the good news is if someone has high blood sugar, there are steps they can take to turn that around. Now, cause number two is high insulin or insulin resistance that's causing that insulin to go too high too often. So somebody might not have high blood sugar. Their blood sugar might be in range. But if insulin has to go really high to keep that blood sugar in range, those high insulin levels can still create a lot of inflammation and create a lot of trouble for the nerves. And one of the biggest aspects that we want to understand is that it has the ability to restrict blood flow to those nerves, which means the body can't bring all the nutrients and tools to those nerves that help them rebuild those insulin coatings and such. So when insulin is high, we want to take steps to bring that down. And number three can go along with these, and that can be chronic inflammation. And when inflammation goes high and you're kind of constantly creating all those inflammatory cytokines, it has the ability to kind of sensitize some pain fibers and kind of restrict that myelin structure around that coating around the nerves, but also interrupt those nerve repair processes. So inflammation going high can cause a lot of trouble like this, but this is a very common cause. And in a lot of cases, that inflammation is high because the insulin is high. But we also want to keep in mind that inflammation can come from other sources, whether that be heavy metals or some other problem in the body 
that's creating all this inflammation. So you might have to work with your doctor to figure out what's causing the inflammation. If you don't have high blood sugar or high insulin levels, something else can be causing this. So you could get a glucometer at a local pharmacy for $40 and just check your fasting blood sugar in the morning. And if that's over 95, that's a really strong sign that your blood sugar is too high and then insulin is also probably too high. But if your blood sugar is in a good range or maybe you've had your insulin tested, then you want to have your doctor help you realize other issues can be creating inflammation and you want to dig into what that is. Now keep in mind that I'm not a doctor. I'm not giving you medical advice here. I'm basically a professional stand-up comic turned nutrition author because when I lost my voice for eight years, 23 different doctors couldn't figure that out. And I had to dig for my own answers. And for 20 years, I've been teaching health professionals in more than 40 countries how to help their clients actually fix the underlying cause of the problems instead of just covering up the symptoms. But if you can take this information and go through the studies in the description below, it'll help you ask better questions to your doctor. Now, number four, where we really start to understand what could be really going on with these myelin sheets, we wanna talk about glycation. So what this is, is when there's too much sugar in the system, those sugars will attach to proteins and fats and they'll kind of stick to them and it will change the structure of that tissue. So when we have too much sugar, it's going to stick to these tissues and now it's going to become something different. So if high sugar glycates the myelin sheaths on these nerves, then the microphages from the immune system say, well, that doesn't look right. We shouldn't have a glycated protein here. And they start to engulf what should not be there. And as they engulf this glycated protein, it also damages that coating on the nerve. So I feel like this is one of the biggest parts that creates this issue for most people. Not everybody, but for most people. You see all these high sugar, high insulin, inflammation, all those things can be part of this glycation issue going on. So if we eat in a way that's creating a lot of these, what they call advanced glycation end products or AGEs, like all the cool kids call it, then it's gonna be a hard time not to eventually create damage to these nerves. So this is a really big deal to understand. And this takes us to cause number five, which is autoimmune responses. And a lot of people say, oh, the immune system just kind of misfires and it attacks your own tissues and it's attacking these nerve things. But I feel like it's probably more about these AGE issues and this glycation issue and the immune system cleaning that up. Now, another thing that we need to consider is that an autoimmune response certainly can happen. That could be, that could be happening for sure. But a lot of times when the body doesn't have the resources that it needs, it will start to break itself down to access those nutrients that it needs to function. So a lot of people kind of look at it like, ah, oh, the body's attacking itself. But my viewpoint is that in some cases, it's just shopping at the 7-Eleven and you're the 7-Eleven. So when you're not bringing in the resources that the body needs, it will break down some other tissues and then that can be kind of collateral damage and then that can create problems down the road. But the body is viewing it like, hey, I need stuff right now. I gotta have stuff now. If you're not gonna give it to me, I'm gonna make it myself. Which brings us to cause number six, which can be nutrient deficiency or catabolism, where the body's kind of breaking itself down like we were just talking about. And one of the biggest deficiencies that you hear a lot about is B12. And you see a lot of studies where people say, oh, they're low in B12 and they have this neuropathy issue because the body can't repair those myelin sheets. You need nutrients for the body to be able to rebuild and repair those structures. If you tried to build a house, but you didn't have any bricks or wood or nails or anything, well, your housewarming party is gonna be a bunch of people standing in your yard eating egg salad. So when you're building something, you need nutrients to do that. So B12 is a very common nutrient deficiency because a lot of people are either eating vegan and they're not bringing enough B12 in, or another problem is they can't access that B12 from the food that they're eating because there are malfunctions going on in the body. So we need to have the nutrients available and then the body can rebuild and repair these structures. So if they're not being rebuilt and repaired, yes, there could be these inflammatory issues that we've talked about, but a problem also could be that the body just doesn't have what it needs to rebuild and repair these structures. So that brings us to cause number seven, which is digestive malfunctions. So in the description, you're gonna see these studies that talk about how chronic PPI use is very strongly associated with this neuropathy stuff. And it's because when we turn off stomach acid, we don't have the ability to access B12 in the food. We need stomach acid to break down those proteins and access the nutrients in that food. 
So the problem is it's not always just about B12. The body needs a lot of other cofactors and a lot of other nutrients. There's other B vitamins that are very common deficiencies with this issue like B6 and B1. And we're going to talk more about those in the solutions video. But what's important to understand is that if you have any digestive symptoms at all, like burping or bloating or acid reflux or constipation or diarrhea or nausea or you know, dyspepsia or maybe just food just kind of sits there like a rock in your stomach and you have crazy indigestion or maybe even just skin or acne issues. All of these are signs that your digestive process is not working correctly and if that's the case, you don't have the ability to access all the nutrients in the food that you're eating. So there's plenty of people who just eat out of a vending machine and they're just eating junk so obviously they're not getting the nutrients the body needs but a lot of people eat well but if they can't digest it correctly, that's going to be a problem. The good news is that we can fix digestive malfunctions. And when we do that, then we can access the nutrients that the body needs to conduct these rebuilding and repairing processes. And the most interesting thing about that digestive cause is that a lot of people, when they have digestive malfunctions, will gravitate more towards eating all these carbs and processed junk and sugars. When they eat proteins or fats like real food, they feel lousy. They can't break it down. They feel awful. But oh man, if I have a toaster pastry, I feel great. So they gravitate more towards this junk and then blood sugar goes higher and higher and creates all these troubles that we were talking about. So you can see that a variety of underlying causes that can create this and a lot of people are often dealing with more than one problem at a time. So when you look at these issues like high blood sugar causing high insulin, creating all of this inflammation, making these autoimmune type reactions happen to all this glycation problems and then everything's breaking down and then if there's digestive problems, they don't have enough nutrients or resources to rebuild the things that have kind of been destroyed. So you can see how all these things actually make sense, that neuropathy can actually make sense and when it does, then it's just about taking steps to correct this. So in my next video, I'll show you the steps, how to bring this blood sugar down or correct this insulin that's going too high and fix these digestive processes along with other problems that might be restricting the body from repairing these things that have been broken down too much. So jump over now and check out our video on seven natural steps to improve peripheral neuropathy. I can't wait to hear about your results.